Well, today is World Population Day, a day set aside in 1989 to draw attention to the challenges of population growth. In line with the day's theme, we are asking questions related to the fate of the youth in the population growth and development on top of the nation. Tonight, we are privileged to host uh, Dr. James Satomusime, a productive health from your Productive Health Uganda, to help us understand the issues uh, that are around this. Welcome to Talk of the Nation. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Musime. Thank you, sir. Now, first forward, um, this is the first time you're having the National Population Day celebrations under COVID-19. And if I'm exact, Aluengo was supposed to host the celebration. So how did we hold the celebrations in a scientific way? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mm. The celebrations were held in a scientific way, and we have had a lot of activities that have led up to this day. Okay. Uh, as Reproductive Health Uganda, we had a pre-event dialogue mm. right here at NTV, where we were able to discuss with uh, technical experts on this matter mm. and put our views forward. But today, I also have been privileged to hear the president addressing the nation on the mm. World Population Day. And I mean, he has made his point very clear, especially around the issues of young people and how they should be an asset to this country mm. and how they should also be very careful to avoid COVID, not to experiment with it. Mm. And he has really spoken uh, loudly around issues of skilling young people and making them bear the fruit that they should bear as mm. the country grows. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this year's theme seems to look a little more about the youth. From your opinion as an expert who deals with them on a daily what could be the biggest challenges the youth are facing today? I think one is that uh, as a country, we have a lot of young people being born into mm. the whole group of being young people. We are a country where about 78% of our people are below the age of 30 years, mm -hmm. but also 50% of all the people in this country are below 15 years. So already we have a challenge that the young people are too many compared to the other part of the population that is supposed to support them. Mm. Uh, we are in a country where young people are giving birth to young people. Mm. People at 15, 16, 20 are having other children. Mm. They have no income to take care of them. Mm. They are dependent themselves. So we have dependents who have dependents. Mm. And this is making it very hard for the young people to realize their potential, mm. for the young people to, for the young people to grow into the meaningful part of the population that they should be. Mm. I, I think as we move into the other parts of the year and moving forward, mm. it is important that uh, we should reevaluate how we can best recognize and make the most value of the young population that we have. Okay. Yeah. Well, talking about the concerns that um, sexual reproductive health of young people needs are not reflected in the National Development Plan um, uh, Vision 2040. What's your take on that? I think that the Vision 2040 clearly speaks uh, around the issues that uh, embody the development of young people. Vision 2040 speaks uh, about skilling young people. Mm -hmm. Vision 2040 speaks around issues of having a population that can be well managed and taken care of with good education and good health. And this is really what young people need today. Mm -hmm. So the missing link is for the young people to be supported to recognize their emerging needs as they grow into their youthful years. Mm. Uh, for example, in Uganda today, almost 30 people grow into the population that should be giving birth, you know, the reproductive age of 15 to 49. So almost 30 people grow into that, uh, that age group every so often. Mm. We are one of the countries with the highest population growth rate, where mm. in every year we add 3%. If you are uh, 48, 43 million this year, next year you'll be a 44 million and this multiplier effect is directly hinged on how many young people are giving birth mm. but the issue is the young people who are giving birth have no means to sustain the new babies they are coming up with. So as we move into Vision 2040 and as the country aspire to grow and, and, and become better, mm. we need to be looking at how we harness the so-called demographic dividend, the the, the, the profit that would be out of having a young population because the young population is able to work, mm. a young population is able to learn new skills, mm. a young population is able to put the extra effort. You know, if the working hours are eight, a younger person could even do more than that. They could touch many things and make the population, I mean, make the, the country move. So we need to focus on how we recognize this, mm. but amidst this, the health of the young people should be prioritized. 
the adolescent sexual reproductive health issues to make sure that young people who are into puberty and experimenting mm -hmm. with their first time sexual encounters do not necessarily end up pregnant and then their whole, for example, a girl child gets pregnant at their first sexual encounter at 16 and they can no longer go on with school, they can no longer become a doctor, they can no longer even become someone's wife because normally the people who are making them pregnant at 16 end up not marrying them and you find the country has lost in twofold. You've lost the young girl because she's no longer going to produce and be part of the economy, mm -hmm. but she's come on with another child whom she's not able to support. So you have a generation of a cycle of poverty, a generation that cannot contribute to the meaningful development of the country. Okay. So really we should be paying attention to these kind of details. Well, there have been concerns um, with regards to challenges of accessing uh, sexual reproductive health integration. Um, will it prevent us from reaching the middle uh, middle income status by 2040 if we if we don't give the accessibility of these services to the young ones? Thank you very much. Mm. If you look at what the aspirations of Vision 2040 are, the aspirations of Vision 2040, one of them is that we need every Ugandan to earn approximately $9,000 from the current $788 per, per annum. Mm. You know, for you to earn that money means that you have to, in a way, be meaningfully employed and able to earn for you to be able to earn means that you're working somewhere and working consistently. If you are in the process of giving birth every one year, if you're in the process of giving birth before you actually have skills mm. that are employable, then chances are very high that you'll not be part of the aspirations of Vision 2040. If you have 10 children and you're a man and you're earning the way you're earning very minimally, there are very few chances that your wealth could be spread around. Mm. If you have land, land is the most critical resource that we have in this country because we depend a lot on agriculture. Mm. But with what agriculture we do, we are using mainly handhold, we are using human intensive approaches of farming. You need to have a land size that is able to produce uh, much, much bigger. People are producing the routine things of, of maize, etc. Mm. These are not necessarily the most high value crops. So for you to do that, you need to have a population that can fit within the available resources and match with the technology as it gets better. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you're having so many people on a very small piece of land with primitive technology, you'll not be able to do much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, um, what can be done to fix this? How do you bridge these gaps? I think bridging these gaps, one, is the awareness that there is a relationship between the reproductive health issues of young people and the rest of the population and the development aspirations of this country that there is a relationship between the number of people that are being given birth to in a country versus the technological and other improvements of the country. Mm -hmm. We need to manage our population to make sure that we are growing at a pace within which our development can contain. We need to be talking about enhancement in health. We need to be talking about enhancement in education and empowerment of the girl child especially mm -hmm. because the girl child contributes very significantly through unpaid labor right. that if they are not being part of the production curve, then you've taken a very big portion of the mm. production capacity of this country. Everyone needs to put their hands on the wheel for us to move faster. Well, Thank there you. you have it. That is uh, Mr. James Tumusime from Reproductive Health. You and I know how best we can be a part of this conversation, how to control population as a nation.